So I have this game with just one room. You open it and it takes you directly into the game without a menu. So in this video, we're going to add that main menu where you can hit play or quit. We're also going to add a help button where you can click to see the controls. First of all, we need a sprite for the button. So here I have a blank button sprite and we are going to draw the text on it in the game. If you want this same sprite, you can download it from the description. Now make sure that you set the origin for this to middle center because we want to draw the text on it at its center. Now let's set up all the rooms we need. The one I have here is for the main game. So I'll rename this to rm underscore game. And then for the menu room, I'll just duplicate this. So we get the same size and the same settings. And I'll call this rm underscore menu. Now obviously you want the menu to open when you start the game. But right now, the game room is set as the first room to open. If you look here, that's what this icon indicates. So I'll click on this icon and in this list, I'll drag RM menu above RM game. And now you can see that the menu room will open when you start the game. Let's open this menu room now. Because we duplicated the game room, this already has the player and the rocks which we don't need. So I'm going to delete all this. And also make sure you delete this instance which doesn't have a sprite because these are quite easy to miss. The room is empty now so let's go and create some buttons and we'll come back to this later to put those buttons here. Now before we go and make the buttons, it's a good idea to make a custom font that we can use to draw the text on our buttons. So in the asset browser here, I'm going to create a new font asset and I'll name this fnt underscore menu. In the editor, I'll select a font I like. There are many good fonts you can download from the internet. I'll set the size to 40, which is quite big and fitting for our buttons. And I'll also turn off anti-aliasing because my font looks better that way. So that's the font done. So let's go and create the main button object. So here I'll create a new object and call this obj button parent. This is the parent or base object for all buttons. And this is going to handle how we interact with buttons and how we draw them. Then we're going to create child objects from this and tell each child button what it's supposed to do. Now this object doesn't need a sprite because it doesn't appear in the game itself. But what it does need is a variable to store the text that appears on the button. So I'll open the variables window and here create a new variable called button underscore text. This will be a string and I'll set the value to be empty and we'll set it in each child object separately. Now for interacting with this button, we want to check if the user has clicked on it with their left mouse button. So for that, I'm going to add a new event and this will be the left pressed event under mouse. I'll leave this empty here and we'll fill it in the child objects. Now the only other thing we need in the parent is to draw the button and the text on it. So for that, let's add the draw event. And inside this event, first of all, let's make sure that the button itself is drawn by using draw self. Now we're going to draw the text, but before we do that, we want to set the alignment and the font that we want to use for it. So I'll add this to set the font to FNT menu, which we just created. And then I'll add this to set the text alignment to center and middle. So the text draws like this instead of drawing like this, which is the default behavior. And now I'll add this to draw the button text variable. I'll draw it at the position of the button itself. Now the last thing to do in this event is to reset the alignments to their default values. Whenever you change any draw property, whether it's the color, alpha or alignment, you want to reset it to its default values after you're done drawing. Otherwise, your change values might interfere with something else that you're drawing later on. I am going to leave the font as it is, but if you do have a default font that you want to use, then you can reset it to that at the end of this event. So we are done with the parent and we can start making the child objects now. I'll make an object for the play button first. So this will be obj button play. I'll assign the button sprite to it. Now this should be a child of the button parent. So I'll open the parents window and click here to set the parent to obj button parent. With that set, in the events list, I can see the events that I made in the parent. 
and if I open the variables window, I also see the variables from the parent. So let's edit this button text variable and write play here. So this button says play and when you click on it, it should take you into the game room. So to program that, we already have a left pressed event here. We don't want to replace this event, but we want to add on to it. So anything in the parents event runs before this event runs in the child object. So for that, right click on it and select inherit event. And now in the event, let's quickly add this to change the room to RM game. And with this, the play button is finished. So let's go ahead and make the help and quit buttons. For the next button, I'll just duplicate the play button object so we get the same sprite and parent. And I'll name this obj button help. I'll open its variables and change the text here to help. I'll leave its event as it is for now and we'll program this after we've made the quit button. So for that, I'll go and duplicate this object and name this obj button quit. In the variables again, I'll set this to quit. And now let's tell this button to quit the game when we click on it. So for that, I'll open its left pressed event. I'll remove this from here. And instead, I'll add this simple call to end the game. That's all the three buttons finished. So let's go and put them in the menu room. So I'll open that room. Make sure the instances layer is selected. And then place our three buttons here one by one. So that's play, help and quit. Go ahead and run the game and you can now quit the game and you can also play it. So that's the basic buttons done. Let's go and quickly work on the help button now. Also stick around till the end of the video for the bonus part where I'm going to animate the buttons. Now for displaying the controls, I'm going to create a new object. I'll call it RPJ underscore controls. And in this object, I'll add the draw event. Now before drawing the controls, I'll add this to set the alignment to center middle. And then let's draw this string of text. So I'm drawing a string here, but in the middle, you may have noticed something new. These two characters, backslash and N, it's a combination that basically means a new line. It's like pressing enter on your keyboard when you're writing an email. And so in the game, you will see these as two separate lines. Now after we've drawn the text, let's reset the alignment as we should always do. And with this, this simple object is done. All we need to do now is to make it so when you click on the help button, this object appears and if it already exists, then it disappears. So the help button itself sort of behaves like a toggle. Let's go into obj button help and open the left pressed event. I'll remove this call we already have from duplicating another object and instead let's do this. First of all, we're going to check if an instance of obj controls already exists in the room. And if it does, then we want to destroy it. So for that, we add this. If you're using GML visual, then make sure you apply this destroy instance action to the obj controls object. Now after this, let's add an else. This will run if the previous condition is false, meaning that obj controls doesn't exist in the room. And that in turn means that we need to create it. So in that case, I'll call this to create an instance of obj controls. I'll create it in the instances layer and at this position. So horizontally, it's in the center of the room and vertically, it's a hundred pixels above the bottom edge of the room. And that should do it. So let's run the game, click on the help button, the controls appear, you click on it again and they disappear. Finally, it's time for the bonus tip. You can make your buttons feel much better with some basic animation. So if you go into your button parent object and add the mouse enter event, here set its alpha to something below one to make it transparent. And then in the mouse leave event, set its alpha back to one, you get this basic effect where the button becomes transparent when you hover over it and it feels much better. Adding a basic click effect is also simple. You just open the left pressed event in the button parent, you change its position slightly and then set an alarm. And then in that alarm event, you reset its position to where it started. And this gives you a nice click effect to go with a fitting sound effect. Now a small problem is that you don't see this effect for the play button because when you click on it, the room changes immediately. So you don't get to see the button move. 
A solution for this is instead of using the left pressed event to change the room, you instead inherit the alarm zero event and change the room here. And then in the game, you click on it, you see the button move, and then the room changes. And that's your basic menu done. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like this other tutorial. So check that out and I'll see you there.